Hello and welcome to the AIM podcast series. I am Mike Allen and I serve AIM as their member engagement manager. AIM is a global industry alliance which represents the interests of manufacturers, software vendors, integrators, government, and end users that use technology based on barcoding, RFID, and mobile technology. AIM membership is about supporting standards, community, advocacy, and knowledge. Specifically, you will receive early access to industry technical research and information. Membership gives you the opportunity to influence the direction of the industry and actively participate in research. AIM is an investment in your future. On today's podcast, we have Henri Bartel of GS1 Global. Henri has been with GS1 since 1988 and is currently Vice President of System Integrity and Global Partnerships at GS1's Global Office. Henri also is the Chair of ISO IEC SC31. On today's podcast, we will be focusing on SC31 and the automatic identification and data capture, otherwise known as AIDC industry. Henri, welcome. Thank you, Mike. So first things first, can you give the listeners an overview of what exactly is SC31? Yeah, sure. SC31 is a subcommittee number 31. It's a subcommittee of a joint uh, committee that exists between ISO, the International Standards Organization, and IEC, the International Electrotechnical Commission, uh, that formed uh, back 30 plus years ago a, a committee, a joint technical committee that they, they called very creatively JTC1, Joint Technical Committee 1, responsible for information technology standards, basically. And so a number of subcommittee were created over the years with SC31 emerging in uh, 1996. And the uh, aim and the goal of SC31 uh, is to provide technical standards for AIDC. Um, and so basically, yeah, barcodes, optical character recognition, RFID, and uh, real-time locating systems. Uh, but also, and importantly, uh, C31 looks also after standards for the data that you put into barcode or RFID tags, for example. Um, and uh, most recently, uh, like one year ago, C31 created a working group to address application standards to, to help and assist uh, ISO, IEC, and other technical committees developing uh, standards and making use of the foundational automatic data capture technology standards. Interesting. So who takes part in SC31? Well, in, uh, in ISO or in JTC1, the uh, members officially are countries. So it's a, a country-based organization. Now, that does not mean that uh, you have only civil service over the table, quite the contrary. Actually, uh, country delegations nominate people who are participating in the working group, and typically they do so through uh, what they call a mirror committee uh, established in, uh, in the different countries that participate in, uh, in IC31 or, or in other uh, ISO, ISO groups. So we have, at the end, uh, a very good combination of uh, solution providers, end users, governmental bodies, associations, etc. So it's actually a very uh, living structure and uh, the participants can come from uh, very much from the, the user base of the different countries. Currently, SC31 has 25 participating countries that are active uh, participants in the proceedings and another 24 observing countries that keep aware of what's going on but do not necessarily participate acti actively. And in addition to that, uh, SC31 has liaisons with uh, about 15 ISO and JDC1 technical bodies, but also with external organizations such as AIM, for example, or, or GS1, uh, as, as two examples. So what are some of the projects SC31 is addressing. Okay, well, let me say that, well, the committee is now 22 years old, and uh, I'm very proud to say, actually, that the committee has published 118 standards over these 22 years of existence, and with a further 30 standards that are currently under development. 
And just to quote a few, uh, well, as you can say, maybe innovative projects, uh, <laughs> barcodes, for example, remains extremely important, as we all know. Uh, there are many barcodes that have been invented uh, over the last 60, 70 years, uh, but there are still innovative ideas coming. And to, just to take a, a couple of examples, there are now work items under uh, development looking at the rectangular data matrix barcode. Uh, rectangular QR code has also been uh, 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 suggested. There are new symbologies such as uh, the Han Xin coming from, from China, and another one with an interesting name, JAB, which stands for just a no barcode. Uh, in addition to that, in, in RFID, I think we have covered a very large ground and we have currently a very comprehensive set of standards addressing not only the RFID air interface, but also the security aspects, the implementations of RFID, as well as the very important conformance and performance standards. In terms of, uh, of data content, of course, there are standards that are well established for identifying the, the content of data that you put in a data carrier. Most recently, we published uh, a new standards that enable to encode digital signatures in barcodes and RFID tags, and that enables to ensure the authenticity of, of data. So that's quite interesting development. And lastly, uh, there is a development of an application standard that just started uh, for electronic labeling, which is also uh, promising in the sense that there are many, many applications these days that say, well, if I scan this barcode, I want to go somewhere or the web resource, for example, and find information about the thing that I just scanned, be it uh, uh, a, a, a certificate of uh, marketing a product in a given market, being, uh, uh, you could imagine, uh, the notice of uh, pharmaceutical products with detailed information about about the things, etc. So, so these are maybe some examples of uh, most recent developments. But again, uh, we have a quite a large portfolio of existing standards that have been uh, published over the years. Okay, that's great to know. And you did bring up some that uh, some of the projects you guys are addressing. Why are these projects cutting edge or important? Cutting edge, uh, I, I don't know, important, why? Because they respond to business requirements. Now, ISO or AC31 in this case uh, doesn't develop a startup because someone thinks it's a great idea. It has to be based on the need, on the business requirements that is uh, uh, expressed by, uh, by, typically comes from a country, but is based on needs that were identified in this particular country. It needs to have support of other countries to go ahead, etc. cetera. So um, they, the, 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 the interesting thing, why is it important? Because there is a business need, I would say, and that's uh, uh, somewhere the business need uh, leads to a requirement for a standard so that implementers can rely on robust uh, standards, stable standards that have been developed according to a very uh, due process, uh, which is uh, uh, fully documented, of course, in the, in the ISO uh, procedures. So what do you consider to be SC31's greatest success and why? Yeah, um, again, I mean, the uh, 22 years of existence means that uh, there certainly has been a very, a very large uh, amount of work being done. And uh, I, I think somehow AIDC uh, is extremely important and it's becoming more and more important if you think about connectivity of things, so you can call it Internet of Things. And so uh, a large number of applications depend uh, on these foundational um, standards that uh, specify how to print a barcode, how to read a barcode, how to interface with an RFID tag, etc., how to uh, create a unique identification number for something, how to capture other data related to it. And just to name a few, I think, successes that you, we all have seen and we continue seeing, 
uh, in our daily life, basically a data matrix, for example, has been adopted and is continuously being adopted in a growing number of industries for many, many different applications. QR code, of course, is ubiquitous. You cannot uh, cross uh, a street without seeing QR codes everywhere. Uh, unique identifiers, that's uh, sometimes not uh, well understood, but it's, uh, it's, an, it's actually a critical element of AIDC. And, uh, and uh, as he said, one has really brought a, a very huge uh, contribution to this uh, question on how to identify things. And last but not least, uh, uh, passive RFID at the UHF bond, bond uh, is uh, very important. And we, we see uh, these days, uh, and I think Rain is extremely aware of that with the, the Rain initiative uh, that, uh, that was launched, but we see literally uh, billions of tags being produced annually to meet the uh, requirements for applications making use of RFID, uh, again, in multiple industries, but uh, these days it's primarily in, uh, in garments, textile, and sports equipment, and these kind of things in, in the retail environment. But we see applications uh, basically everywhere. It has a huge level of uh, acceptance to market. Of course, nothing close to what predictions might have been 15 years ago, but we really see an increasing pace of adoption of uh, RFID at UHF technologies. And uh, this is completely relying on standards that uh, are actually managed by SC31. Very interesting. So looking into the future, what do you think will be SC31's strongest area in the coming year? Yeah, that's a very good question again. But uh, as already alluded to, I think the, the, the trend of connectivity, things get more and more connected. Uh, and, and again, you can call that Internet of Things, you can call that with different names, but that's, there is obviously a trend there to have uh, ubiquitous connectivity with uh, things, assets, uh, devices, uh, software applications, and even people. And that, le of course, leads to a, to a massive collection of, of data. Now, uh, one has to be aware that uh, very 99% of the cases, this is based on reliable data capture technologies, which is AIDC fundamentally, uh, and, and also, of course, on the standard data that you can expect and be able to process, and including the data, of course, and primarily the unique identifier. So SC31, I think, uh, has a bright future in the sense that it, it will remain the, the reference point uh, for all these enablers technologies that are not always, let's say, very spectacular to the, to the end users, but are fundamental to, to enable this, uh, this growth in, in, in connectivity and uh, of uh, resilience of value-added applications that uh, uh, are linked to this, uh, to this uh, phenomenon that we, that we can see uh, these days. Yeah. So thank you for the information on SC31. And now I want to move forward and discuss some things about the automatic identification industry. Uh, first being, what do you see as the most impressive trends going on today? Yeah, in, in general, let's say, I think the AIDC industry has provided a huge amount of uh, of uh, possibilities of services, etc. One of the main uh, opportunity or trends is the adoption. We see adoption going on with impressive trends in, in some sectors, uh, specifically for sectors where regulations are very important, uh, but also for sectors where uh, more efficient ways to, to, to carry the business uh, is understood and being important. So. I Henri, are you still there?
Henry, if you can hear me, uh, I did lose your connection. Thank you for that information on SC31. I now want to move forward and discuss some other things about the automatic identification industry. First being, what do you see as the most impressive trends going on today? Yeah, it's a very good question. And actually, I think the most impressive trend is not that much about technology. It's more about adoption, implementation. We see adoptions coming up uh, in some sectors, in some countries, in some area. Uh, coming up very strong, and it's also uh, triggered by uh, by a growing number of governmental regulations that uh, start mandating uh, the uh, use of AIDC technologies for a number of uh, of reasons in different sectors. Now, are there specific vertical markets that you see being the best positioned for the future? And also, what vertical markets do you think will be the fastest growing? Yeah, it's always uh, difficult to predict, especially to predict the future, of course. But uh, yeah. I would say that uh, adoption of EIDC in healthcare is, uh, is certainly growing fast. And there are there a uh, typical example of regulatory requirements uh, that uh, aim at ensuring the uh, integrity of the products uh, from the manufacturing up to the the use of the medicaments and medical devices by patients, etc. Uh, we see also transport and logistics that uh, is growing very fast. And one of the explanation there is the uh, e-commerce, which leads to a huge increase of the number of parcels and items being uh, shipped all over the world and uh, where tracking and tracing is, uh, is done, not any longer necessarily at the container level or at the pallet level, if you could say, but at, at the more granular level. And we see that phenomenon across multiple supply chains and across different modes of transport. Just to take, take a quick example, I, I'm aware that, for example, the aviation industry is being uh, requested more and more uh, not only to take care of the uh, tracking of goods between an airport to another airport, but for the whole supply chain. That means the uh, globalization and the need for having more granularity in the tracking of items uh, and therefore the impact on, on logistics uh, is important and, and therefore the adoption of AIDC technologies is growing uh, fast as well in this uh, particular sector. So what do you think are the greatest challenges to the AIDC industry on a global basis? Well, challenges uh, are probably the danger that um, the way the technology is being used would be used or could be used in, in different manners. So having harmonized way, harmonized approaches to address similar uh, business processes or similar, let's say, uh, regulatory challenges is extremely important. Uh, there is a, a risk of not, not aiming for a harmonized standards. There is a risk, of course, to have uh, multiple dialects uh, emerging in different countries, in different sectors. And so that, that's a challenge. And uh, I think that, uh, well, a number of groups uh, are uh, of course, making sure that this is addressed properly and that we go for a, a, a way to do things globally in a, in a harmonized manner. And lastly, what are the greatest opportunities for the AIDC industry on a global basis? Yeah, and I will, <laughs> I will try to respond to that question in a very, very easy manner to say, well, if the challenge is uh, 
to to make sure that the standards are harmonized, the biggest opportunity I think is to have harmonized application standards that will enable uh, a real uh, opportunity and, and growth of the AI DC industry, which again in itself is not an objective. The objective is not to put a barcode. It's the objective is not to read a tag. The objective is to have more efficiency in uh, processes, in uh, in different ways, let's say, to achieve certain goals. Uh, but it's, uh, of course, fundamental to have also uh, at the level of the enabling fundamental uh, technologies, including IDC, harmonized approaches to, to, do that, uh, to do that properly and uh, ideally, of course, to do that uh, in a similar way uh, all around the globe. Henri, thank you for your time and information today. Thank you very much, Mike. It has been my pleasure. Thank you. To learn more about SC31 or the AIDC industry in general, you can go to www.aimglobal.org or reach out to us at our email at info at aimglobal.org or by phone. The number is 724-742-4470. Thank you and have a great day. Okay, Henri, thank you so much for filling